Good afternoon, everybody. Joining me today is Rob Saltzman from First Lithium. In this interview, we discuss how Rob got into a lithium deal in Chile. We discuss how direct lithium extraction technology could solve the environmental impact on Chilean lithium producers. And we discuss where Canada is in regards to global lithium production. Guys, I think that Chilean lithium deals are very interesting. There is a ton of regulatory risk, but there are some really, really tasty assets. Guys, if you look at what's happening with electric vehicles, pretty much every car company in the world is switching to electric vehicles, and that's going to be powered by lithium batteries. In the words of the Wall Street Journal, Chile has the ability to be to lithium what Saudi Arabia is to oil. One would assume that the Chilean people and government aren't going to be sitting on their hands watching this tremendous economic wave pass them when they're sitting on a winning lottery ticket. It's just a matter of figuring out how to navigate this environmental impact. All right, everybody, enjoy the interview. Rob, thanks so much for joining us today. Hey, my pleasure. Good to see you, Steve. So, uh, Rob, let's let's start at the top here. How did you get involved in the lithium space? What was your thesis uh, for lithium? What's the background story here? Okay. Um, back in 2016, I was uh, investing in some lithium stocks. I actually met the CEO of uh, one of the Chilean lithium companies, and I said, are you doing anything in Toronto? Uh, like, are you talking to any bankers here? He said, not really. I said, look, I've got to set you up with a bunch of meetings, which I did. Um, we went out to the meetings and the more at, at every meeting, I learned more and more and more about the company. But more importantly, I learned specifically about the country. And everybody at that time was running to Argentina and Argentina was overstaked and everybody was trying to do whatever they could. This is in 2016 uh, and 2017, mostly. And I decided that I'm going to go to Chile after hearing, um, you know, about the what I'll what I'll refer to as the issues in Chile, you know, uh, lithium being built into the Constitution and so on. And I thought that that that's an opportunity to get into something uh, that's undervalued for those reasons. And uh, Obviously, recently that sort of proved out with the recent Chilean election where they tried to, you know, change the constitution and so on. So. Okay, so uh, let's let's talk about Chile. Uh, there was a piece in the Wall Street Journal a couple of weeks ago that said Chile is or Chile could be the Saudi Arabia of lithium, but the government is blowing it. So what can you tell us about Chile and what is the opportunity or the 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 risk reward scenario for investors who who want exposure to uh, Chil uh, Chilean lithium deals? Okay, so I guess what they were referring to is the fact that the Chilean solars happen to have the highest grades of lithium in the world. So the largest, for the, for example, the largest solar is actually uh, in Bolivia. Um, however, a lot of people are leery about doing business in Bolivia today, and they would prefer to do business in Argentina and Chile. Um, the Atacama specifically is one solar. It's uh, got a, a, over 4,000 ppm, 4,000 parts per million lithium, which is absolutely uh, huge uh, in numbers. And that's why you've got both Albemorle and SQM that are there. Uh, there's other solars um, that are in the country as well. We're on, you know, three other solars that are Right next to each other, we're in a region. It's a regional play, Solar de Oyawe, Solar de Carcot, and Solar de Azcatan. Um, and again, historical numbers have shown on those Solars uh, up to 1,000 parts per million, which are also very high in lithium. So they're referring to the country uh, as Saudi Arabia because of the the high quality, uh, the, the, the high uh, the high quality lithium, the 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 high parts per million of lithium in the solars. However, there is an issue in the country right now in that the you know there's an environmental issue, um, and the government, um, the the current government that was elected. So so, in so just recently, just, just to set that up, the 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 issue is all the water that gets used to uh, pump all of the lithium out of the solars. Is that it? Pretty much, pretty much. So 
Um, let's assume that this is the Earth's surface, and this is us where we walk. I'm gonna I'm gonna talk in very layman's terms, not a geo not geological terms or anything. Underneath the surface, there's an area. There's a basin. There's a whole area underneath there, mm -hmm. and that's so. For example, in the Salar de Atacama, and it's filled whether there's you know it's rock that's porous rock that's filled with lithium uh brine uh lithium can uh, brine you know lithium containing brine or um or whether it's actual liquid what happens is um these solar the, the, what happens is currently they're putting pumps over on these solars they're pumping the brine out and they're putting them into evaporation ponds and these evaporation ponds are massive, like we're talking kilometers worth of evaporation ponds. And they're basically taking the air and the sun and they're evaporating out the water. What happens is if you've got this area and you're pumping brine out, you're leaving a void under there. Right now, there's perfect pressure. So the the brine, which is heavier than water, is putting outward pressure on the wa on the water. And now what happens is you're you're sucking out that brine and you're just evaporating it. So what happens is it doesn't happen overnight, but over years, the water from the surrounding water tables starts to infill into that void. So you're a farmer and you could be 50 kilometers away, for example. You're not even close to the solar. You've been on this land for 100, 150 years. You've got a well that you've built. It, let's say your family built it 100 years ago and it's 25 feet down and you're taking water out of that well no problem you're feeding your crops or you're feeding your cattle more importantly you're you're feeding your family you need water obviously um and all of a sudden your well runs dry you come in you hire somebody they dig a well let's say they go down 50 feet or 75 feet a few years later that well runs dry because again the water the amount of brine that they're actually pumping out of the solar and into these evaporation ponds is enormous and it's leaving these these gaps these voids that are being infilled by the water that's it in layman's terms that's the environmental issue so they're harming the environment people can't farm animals uh humans crops whatever so if you are an investor in a uh chilean lithium deal is do we just assume that uh the lithium companies are going to be able to just go ahead and uh you know create these solars or 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 do we assume that this makes it so that th th that these resources will never be tapped well no but not exactly first of all the government loves to work well the government i wouldn't say loves to work the government almost prefers to work with these smaller companies um some of who are actually spending a lot of time and attention on newer technologies versus evaporation ponds. Now, obviously, there's even technologies in trying to evaporate the water and taking the lithium out of uh, out of the, um, the the brine as well. However, one of the things that or some of the things that that the various companies are doing, and specifically ourselves, we're working on new technology. For example, you've heard the expression DLE which stands for direct lithium extraction. Um, I'm not going to mention any company names. However, we're in discussions specifically with, you know, three different, gr three different groups. Um, one is an Israeli company. Um, this Israeli company has already been in the battery space. They actually sold a battery metals uh, technology company in the billions range. Uh, we're talking to a group in the U S um uh, stanford university and we're also talking to some canadian groups uh as well about using their dle basically so, so, DLE... so, so, so Go ahead. yeah so 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 this would be eliminate that sort of environmental risk of all the water usage absolutely so instead of being on the solar and pumping water out into an evaporation pond which is the current technology or current lack of technology, uh, what we would actually do is we would actually pump the water out into our facility. The facility would actually have uh, big, um, big vats, containers, whatever. Inside these containers would be what they call sorbents. 
people refer to them as, you know, some sorbents are these beads, these beads that are uh, using ionic exchange. And basically the beads are programmed to only grab on to the lithium molecules. And so you agitate it, the, you know, it'll sit there for a couple hours. It'll grab onto as much lithium. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take the beads out or you're going to drain the water and leave the beads in there. You're going to drain the brine, I should say. And you're going to pump the brine back in to the, to the, you know, to your solar where you've taken it from, but at a higher level because you've now lightened it. You've taken the lithium out. So technically, even the lithium is one of the lighter elements you're going to pump it in above the surface. So you're going to pump from a lower surface and put it in at the high. And therefore, you've actually preserved the water table. So that's the idea behind DLE. And that's the idea that, you know, one of the things that we're looking at doing and, uh, you know, our discussions with these companies. Okay, so... Uh... You're obviously following the lithium markets in general. The 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 price of lithium has effectively uh, skyrocketed over the last couple of years, um, and it it hasn't done what usually happens in these commodity cycles, where it goes up and then comes back down. It's actually stayed at that. You know, um, I've I got the numbers in front of me here. Um, was it about uh, sixty to eighty thousand uh, dollars per ton uh, for for lithium carbonate? Um, do do you think that the lithium prices will remain here? Uh, for for the foreseeable future or do you think that this is just sort of a, a a bottleneck we're dealing with right now um i don't think it's a bottleneck uh lithium prices for i think the market is giving everybody warning that they're not going to be able to bring on um all type you know all these new lithium mines everybody's talking you know there's been some crazy reports that have come out uh from all sorts of analysts you know that's assuming every lithium mine at once comes on stream, they're talking about a glut of lithium. The reality is that it takes years to get these uh, online. It takes years to produce a, um, a factory, build everything out, get these produced. The governments, as you probably know, same reading everybody else does, um, by 2030, they're going to be pressing where only 50% of cars are going to be able to be sold as gas-powered vehicles. And we're all being forced, both in the United States and in Canada, so North America, to shift towards electric vehicles. And the intention is, by 2035, to actually be selling only 100% electric vehicles. So I, I leave it to you to say, this is sort of the new, the new gasoline. And uh, look at the demand. Um, everybody that buys a car is going to need, everybody that buys a car is going to need to, you know, they're all going to be electric and there's going to be a need for batteries. Um, so hence you had prices in January of 2020, about 68, $6,900 going up as high as just call it 80,000 per ton right now. Um, and if you look at benchmark minerals intelligence, uh, my, we've updated the deck. We've taken that slide out. We've replaced it with something else, but I can get you a copy. They're anticipating 2024 is that inflection point. Currently, there's more of a supply than there is demand today. But in 2024, they're expecting the demand to finally outstrip supply. And when demand starts to outstrip supply, I don't have to tell you what happens with prices. So, so, so we've seen. Uh, some pretty tremendous lithium uh, booms and busts, at least from the capital market standpoint. Uh, it's, 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 it seems like lithium gets hot every like four years and then falls back down. Uh, right now, uh, you've obviously been uh, in the lithium space since it sounds like 2016. Uh, what's what's the conversations like? You know, there's a lot going on in the world, right? We've got the yield curve uh, at levels we haven't seen in a decade. Um, so I understand that the raising money for pretty much anything is, is, is challenging, but what's it like right now when you're talking to say potential funds or, you know, high net worth individuals that invest in junior markets when you discuss lithium today versus say 2016, 2017? Uh, believe it or not, lithium is probably one of the things that they all have interest in. You know, there's, there's a, we're seeing interest rates, uh, rising to fight, inflation you know this is a whole other it's a bigger picture than what you're just asking but 
you know, we're, we, we you, you've now seen the bond market get killed because interest rates are rising. Inverse relationship, bonds are getting killed, so you can't hide. Because interest rates are rising, suddenly you can get a real return on your money with zero risk by investing in fixed income products. So everybody's running from, you know, uh, the stock market right now to be able to pick up yield with perfect safety, given what's going on. However, the one thing that is, well, the one commodity, I guess, that's still holding up, exactly like you said, in all this is lithium. And I think it's going to continue to hold up. Um, and, you know, we're, we're going to go through cycles where if somebody talks about getting a new facility online, that could alleviate some of the pressure. I don't think you're going to see sixty-eight or $6,900 lithium again. I think that you know, we're now in an era where you're going to see substantially higher uh, lithium prices, more like in the range of where we are or higher. Um, but I do feel that the writing is on the wall. We're we're basically being forced every single new vehicle in the next, call it, if it's not 10 years, 12 years is going to be electric. That's going to put okay, so an enormous upside pressure on it. One other uh, area that I wanted to chat about uh, with you is what's happening with lithium uh, in 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 Canada. Uh, we've we've seen, like I said, some some points in time where there's been tremendous capitals flowing into some of the lithium junior deals, and then it dissipates. And if we look at that uh, North America lithium mine, which I think's had like a hundred different uh, reincarnations, uh, whether you want to say Rodinia or um, uh, lithium Quebec, Canada lithium. I can't remember uh, all the different uh, times that it's been bought and sold and repackaged in a new public deal. Um, uh, first list uh, lithium has an asset in in Quebec in the Val d'Or area, is my understanding. Uh, what do you think uh, needs to happen to really move uh, lithium forward as an industry in the province of Quebec? Well, I, I think. It's a foregone conclusion that Quebec is a real hotspot for lithium. You know, even, uh, I think last week you even saw an article come out from the uh, the New York Times that literally covered Quebec lithium. So uh, it is a foregone conclusion that there is lithium all over the place. Um, however, Quebec has a large amount of lithium. You had, you did have a problem with the mask a few years ago. Um, they couldn't get it to be completely efficient, and when lithium dropped. Two under seven thousand dollars, you know, uh, Namaska went bankrupt, and uh, the North American Lithium Mine, which is the mine that we're very close to, at seven thousand uh, dollars per ton, it is also not um, not an eco it's not economically viable. So that mine had shut down. But with lithium trading in the range that it is, whether it's fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty thousand dollars, suddenly becomes very economical. So, you know, if you know Quebec, number one, we're in a, I'm going to, I'm going to self-promote for a moment here, but Valdor is sort of the, uh, the hotspot. It's the main uh, mining city in Quebec or the main mining town. Um, we've got a property that literally is right next to the highway and it's about maybe 18 kilometers from Valdor. Um, and that's where our property is. Now the property is still fairly green. I'm not going to say, you know, that uh, we've we've that we've uh, drilled it yet, uh, but the geologists who staked it they they staked it because you know their whole uh, premise the premises of staking their thesis was that it's got the same general characteristics that are at that the North American lithium mine that you referred to earlier has as well as a Sayona property. So north just north of our property northwest actually is the mine you refer to. We're, we're less than 20 kilometers as well, another 20 kilometers from the North American lithium mine. And that's being reopened by, it's a joint venture between uh, Piedmont and Sayona. And uh, I don't have to tell you who those guys are. So, mm -hmm. you know. I, it, I, 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 I remember as a young retail investor uh, going and visiting Sayona's booth, this Australian company, uh, at PDAC. And they said that I was the first investor who went by, uh, over like three days. No, there was no interest in it. And I thought these guys are probably the most real, uh, lithium company that, that I know that's out there that, that, that seems to be on a path to, 
to figuring out how to start making lithium in Quebec. So it's funny now the headlines that they're getting and generating. Uh, nobody really seemed to talk about them. I think that they were, you know, how these Australian stocks get. There's probably a billion uh, shares outstanding. But I'm 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 really happy, selfishly, uh, having sniffed that one out four years ago, uh, seeing how successful they're 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 being. That's actually a great story. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, R Rob, I, I really appreciate you hopping on here. Uh, there's obviously going to be a lot of developments in this company. I, I know you've been working on this for uh, four years. Um, hopefully you'll keep coming back on here and updating us as there's more developments with the story. I, I wish you lots of success and uh, really appreciate your time today. Okay. My first lithium, FLM. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Rob. Thanks, Steve. Thanks for having me. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. If you could, please hit the like button, subscribe and ring that notification bell and let us know what you think in the comment section. All right. Thank you, everybody.